Welcome Friends of the Crawford, we're delighted to be down here today and we are in the Chapel Hill um, School of Art and I'm delighted to be back with my buddy Bernadette who on, on your invitation, thanks very much for inviting us to this absolutely terrific open day here today. Bernadette, do you want to tell us a little bit about what's going on here today in Chapel Hill? Absolutely, Michelle. We're always delighted to have you here and all of the friends at the Crawford. So it's lovely to be here working with you again and seeing your face and hello to all the friends. So uh, here we are in the community room of Chapel Hill School of Art and uh, we are delighted to welcome the traditional lace makers of Ireland back to Chapel Hill for their second visit. Um, the ladies come and stay in Gugambara Hotel twice a year where they have a meeting, a symposium, a great creative session comes and because we have the long history of lace making here in Chapel Hill who's really interested in having the ladies come here and revive lace making here as you can see uh, from this photograph this is a photograph dating back to um, the early 1900s of the traditional the lace makers that were here making yawl lace in St Mary's up until 1906 so there is a remarkable history of lace making here in McCroom and of course all over Cork and thanks to the traditional lace makers of Ireland that history has been preserved revived and shared with everybody which is what we're eager to do today so I do love this photograph you can see here in the foreground um, one of the characters that were part of the lace making team and uh, we found this photograph here in the school once the renovations began and Joe Neeson decided to um, keep the photograph and frame it and no sooner did one of the neighbours come in didn't she recognise her auntie here in the foreground of the picture so we're just loving this continuous connection. So I'd like to introduce you to Veronica Stewart and the chairperson of the Traditional Lace Makers Ireland to chat to you a little bit about the work that's going on here. We have all of the ladies here doing their work and exhibiting the various different types of lace and we're really excited to share that with you. Thanks very much. Delighted to be here, ladies. You look absolutely beautiful, protecting the, all of this finery that you've you've actually stitched to yourselves. Um, Veronica, you happened to mention earlier, actually, about the tradition of lace making in Crawford that you remembered as well. So that was quite a nice connection. Yes, yes, there was a great history and as well logged in the 1800s in the Crawford art. They done, I think, mostly Limerick lace, Limerick tambour, um, and it was piles of history people coming and going and making lace and this is typical of what would have been made during that time so this is a lady's afternoon tea gown so you know when you're going for afternoon tea you need something like this over your posh frock and it's it's just a fall really over it and it's it's done in diamond net which means that this was made in the 1800s so the net changed in the early 1920s so what we're making today is made in hexagonal net Eleanor Eleanor's our chairman Welcome, Eleanor. Nice to meet you. you. Eleanor made this now in the hexagonal net uh, just a couple of years ago. She was going to a wedding in America and she was offered lots of money but wouldn't part with it. <laughs> um, okay, you were just telling me there about this fabulous gown that Eleanor was wearing. Uh, Eleanor made this shawl. She was going to her nephew's wedding in America just a couple of years ago. And it's completely limerick lace it's as we make it today. So it's nice having the old and the new. Um, and we measured this at the time, Eleanor's is 66 inches wide and it's a full swing of a shawl and it has all the traditional stitches, the stitches that we would be expected to use, uh, would, would have done in the past. You have the heavy and light darning, you have cobweb and you have all the different stitches in her. And it's the tree of life. Do you see the tree in the middle? And, and it grows and grows. And Ella just became a great grandmother. So she has to add another leaf to her family, you know, her little family tree. The parasol above you is also a limerick lace, but that's what we call limerick tambour. So it's done with a tiny crochet hook. Um, and that is your afternoon parasol that you would keep. It's mostly to keep the sun off your makeup. But if it happened to rain, you could slip the lace off and put it in your pocket. Um, so th the hat that Eleanor have is a Battenberg, it's a, a fan hat. Do you want to try it on there first, Eleanor? Oh, look, this is fantastic. Absolutely fabulous. Yeah, isn't that gorgeous? Isn't that gorgeous? Don't turn around and give us a look at the back of it. So when we were here in October with Bernadette, she had the school children in and Eleanor spoke to the children and there wasn't a word out. And we we're not sure if they were fascinated by the hat or by what she was saying, but it was great. For something like this piece here now, Eleanor, how long would it take to actually, from start to finish, um, to work on this piece here? I suppose it took me a year, did it? A year, yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. So the time you work. Yes. If you can work from eight in the morning till eight in the evening, as they would have over here in the lace house, but we're social workers, so we're doing it in our own time, in our own pace. And you were telling me there's a great crowd of you. There's 120 something members in total. In our traditional lace makers, there is, and we have a, a group from all over the country really this week in Guganbara and we've been coming to Guganbara now for 17 years we've been coming twice a year and we just sit and make lace and swap ideas and patterns you have most of the lace teachers here so it's like a gathering for uh, teachers to swap and see what's going on and where we are with things and we're hoping that Bernda will get the lace making going here why not it's a, it'd be a beautiful turnover if that will happen. It's fantastic even to see the different styles of lace from the different counties, so as you mentioned, the Limerick and then, you know. And we have quite a few doing Carried Macross. We have Mount Melick, we have Yall, you have Irish Crocia. Liz Over is working on um, Yall. And the lady inside Liz is doing tambour, which is how that parasol was done. Catherine is doing tambour. Kay is over, is one of our very experienced teachers, and she's doing, she's making a lampshade in Irish crochet. I think it's for her boudoir, is it, Kay? <laughs> I'll have to come over and have a little word with Kay there in a minute and see now what I need to do to be making for one of those, yeah. Well, listen, thank you very much. I'm going to take the camera around and have a little look at what everyone's doing. And it's lovely to be here amongst you ladies, definitely. It's lovely to see the hands working. So, and thank you for having us. And we're all for the promotion of Irish lace. Percent. Thanks very much, ladies and um, friends of the Crawford. We're hoping that you'll um, get to see some of these yourselves. I know I came across you a few years back in the County Hall on Culture Night and with your beautiful parasols. So I'm going to have a look over here. So thank you very much and delighted that to be here today. Oh, yes, thank you very much. Thank you.